to a late lunch because I know we've took a lot of your time and it's really appreciated that you've donated your time and equipment so that we can help educate the world about surveyors, GIS, geodesy, and all this stuff that uh, we really need more communication between all the professions and students of all. Mm -hmm. So if the camera will follow us over here, we're gonna, I think we're going to tie into a checkpoint and we're going to shoot some actual survey points. So when you when you start a top serve, it automatically goes through the process and hooks up to the data to the uh, reference station. So right. it and it's based on the the job configuration, which one you're plugged into. There's two configuration sets in here: one for this reference station here in Galveston, and another for the reference station in Bolivar. And how far from the reference station are you? Are you have you typically worked? I know you've only had this unit for two weeks, but how long have you? I you know, shot. What I shot a monument that was about 22 miles from here, and it was it wasn't a horizontal monument, so I missed the horizontal, which I expected to do. It's a vertical class one. I missed it by a hundredth. A hundredth of a foot. A hundredth of a foot at you 20 miles. Do you think that was just coincidence, or you think oh, that was Oh, absolutely coincidence. Okay. Absolutely coincidence. Just like to know, because so compensating manufacturers, errors. a lot of them say, you know, three miles, six miles, ten miles. This one is wondering. specced at 14, I believe. Okay, 14, 14 miles. miles. So to take a shot, it's already hooked up to the, the reference station, because it, it's it does that automatically. You just go into survey topo. Then I'm gonna bubble it up for you. Well, I. Oh, okay. It doesn't. Yeah, matter. it's not. It's not collecting data yet. Okay. Right. It didn't dial the reference station for some reason. As far as the learning curve for your crews when you got this to get them out where they could function with it, what was the, you know, a day, half day, five days? It was it was two hours uh, because we were already running TopCon software, so it was just really a show them the difference in this new version as opposed to the old. Do you believe in all GPS, or are you hooked into one brand, or are you really? What do you feel? I've we have three brands at this company, and all of them work. It, does it have to do with the procedures or the? It's really yeah. It, any GPS receiver out there is going to give you good answers as long as you follow good procedures. And you have an understanding of and datum projections. Exactly. And if you understand what you're, the tool, it's a hammer. It's, this is a hammer, <laughs> and that's all. And if if you want to. If you want to build a house with a hammer, that's great. Just because you have a hammer doesn't mean you can build a house, though. That's a good point. You used to could tell uh, brands by color, but no longer. Oh, I know. I know. The, uh, that's interesting. I mean, you know, years ago it was there was just a few GPS manufacturers. It was either yellow or it was red or, or green or, or whatever. Green. And now it's uh, there's a lot of yellows and there's green. There's several shades of green. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm really, you know, I think all GPS is good, and that's part of our goal here is to show as many different brands as we can. Uh, just that today we happen to be using Topcon and their latest model, which is the GRS-1, which has all the features that Stephen Pointman pointed out, including the 5 megapixel camera, which may not sound all that important, but it is important because I think part of every survey job, especially if we're finding original monuments in our state, which could be a rock or a mesquite tree or evidence of, that was set 100, 150 years ago, crew goes out all the way out to take the time and effort to find and the best evidence of that monument, having a photograph to put in your file is is valuable instead of having to carry a separate camera. That to me is one of the coolest features because most of the receivers have uh, or they will in the next month all of the technology, the Bluetooth, the uh, internet capability. And okay, now you're connected back with the uh, internet where that you're connected to the reference station right and you're in the survey mode survey okay. software and now it's counting down or there's, it's not counting there's down. there's a hundred percent radio leak it's still in an autonomous mode it hadn't resolved its baseline length okay but it's it's working on it now it's fixed fixed means that we're getting a survey grade answer it's given me a horizontal residual of about 13 hundredths and a vertical residual of about 17 hundredths okay and if I start this recording and make sure it's It's turned off the number of epics that we count. All right. 
And you see these numbers for the horizontal and vertical residuals are falling off. Right, they are. So it's about four hundredths now and about four hundredths vertical. That's a... Uh, and that's a 15 second shot. That's awesome. And it's saying it's got a horizontal residual of 0.02 and a vertical residual of 0.04. So we just store the shot? Just store the shot. Great. And as far as descriptor and all that, you can just, do you have a feature code list that you load in here? We don't here. use one. They just punch we them in. We just punch do. them in as But it go. doesn't really matter. It's up to each surveyor how they do that. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it's one a, other thing, is there any ability in this software to do line work in the field? Absolutely. Okay. So absolutely. you could actually come in with a partially completed drawing. Right. I could even, even if I didn't want to code it in, I could draw it if I wanted to. Okay. Just connect the points. Connect the dots. Awesome. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you.